You guys know I love James Clear, jamesclear.com. He's not a sponsor or anything. I just love his work. Um, he was talking about creativity the other day, and he threw three ideas out. And I want to share these with you and kind of riff on them a little bit. And I know this will help you. Uh, he talks about this two-step process for exceptional results. He says, number one, spend a little time each day thinking about the highest leverage activity available to you. <laughs> that is so good. Put that in your calendar. Put that as a reminder on your phone that it just dings. And you're going to say, I'm going to spend 10 minutes. I'm going to spend 20 minutes. Just right now, thinking about the highest leverage activity available to you. What creates, in your business, what creates the highest ROI? Think about that. And it's just not return on investments. What creates the highest leverage for your employees? What creates the highest leverage for your spouse or partner? And then he says, number two, spend a little time each day working on it. Mm, that's so good. Rob Deerdick, uh, many of you may know him. He's got tons of shows on MTV and stuff like that. Absolutely love him. You should follow him on Instagram. Uh, super cool. He talks about what his highest leverage activity was and one of the was to make sure that his wife kind of knew he's so busy an entrepreneur he has tons of businesses he's trying to be a billionaire he's got you know millions and millions of dollars lives in beverly hills all this like what we would have as a dream life but he's super busy so what he has his assistant do and this is really cool she writes out an email for him that lists everything that he's going to do for the day for his wife so she knows what he's doing He's going to be in meetings from this time to this time. Then he's going to lunch, you know, with this person. And he doesn't have to do it. It's, it's just a one, it's one email. It's done by his assistant every day that lets his wife know it. And then from there, they can plug in, you know, lunches, spa time, dinner time, whatever it is. And I thought, you know, that's a high leverage. And, and he's got an assistant and he's got money. And you're like, I don't have any of those things. You do have things that are like that, that you can leverage. You have activities that are available to you that create the highest leverage. And you need to spend a little time thinking about that. Like instead of wasting time doing something that's unproductive, <clears throat> Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and I'm guilty. I, I take sometimes relax and do all those things too. But those aren't my highest leverage activities. Going to the gym is. If I'm not physically fit, I can't do and work the way that I want to. I can't be happy with myself. Highest leverage activities, going on vacations. For me, that's the highest. That's where I'm most creative. That's where I do a lot of thinking. I'm able to read a lot and read books. And, you know, so I, I really don't take a vacation. I keep my mind turning. And then I go to art museums. It helps my marketing. It's a high leverage activity for me. Another one is Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings, I'm not interrupted on Slack. I get zero emails from work. I don't have to do anything. All I get to do is focus on being creative. And I spend Sunday mornings for just a couple hours with a cup of coffee and relaxed. A lot of, time, a lot of people are sleeping and I'm up and I'm just thinking of things that are creative. I'm just letting it flow. I've got my yellow notepad, my legal notepad with my favorite pen and I'm just sitting here writing things out. And I'm just letting my brain wander and go. And, and, and new things always begin to pop up. I love my creative time on Sunday mornings. It's one of my favorite times of the week. Number two, he says, with the creative process, the key is to create a lot and edit a lot. Make more than you need, then remove everything that isn't exceptional. This is so, we're so quick. We don't take a block of time to make something, whether you're, you're making a marketing campaign or you're going through a huge report, edit a lot, create a lot. Take the extra time to do that and then go through the pages and pages. I'll just make a Google Doc and just start typing and tons and tons of stuff and then I kind of organize it, kind of figure out where it needs to go, paste this, remove. And then, and then, and I've never thought of it this way, but this is so beautiful. Remove everything that isn't exceptional. <laughs> there goes 70% of it. Just like that. Even if you only have 30%, but it's exceptional and you organize that, that right and your presentation has that 30% in it and it's clean and it's simple and it's exceptional, imagine what that's going to look like compared to just a cluttered whatever your thoughts were or just a process of putting it on there or just trying to make it look good. 
Number three, what you do on your ordinary days determine what you can achieve on your extraordinary days. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Mr. Clear, throwing it down again. It's what you do on your ordinary days. Because when an extraordinary day hits, and we a lot of times we don't know when they're going to be, all that compound interest that we've done on those ordinary days that we thought that we weren't growing. And I've had this happen here recently. I've had some really big projects that really kind of scared me at first. And I was fearful of doing them and thought that that may be out of my realm of my talent and ability. And guess what? I sat down, I did them. And it was those ordinary days. It was me doing work day in and day out that led up to me being able to accomplish these projects, even when I doubted it in the beginning. And well, guess what? It's given me more confidence. You're disciplined in your ordinary days. It's going to give you the, comp the confidence to have that extraordinary day when you need to. To be able to stand up and kill it in that presentation. To be able to have a, a coaching session where you've got to address something that's very uncomfortable, but you've been doing tons of coaching sessions already, so this one's a breeze for you. And you do it with love and compassion, and the other person changes, apologizes, and you guys move on in a great way and become closer, and they become an effective team leader when they were going to be fired. That's extraordinary, isn't it? These are wonderful. Appreciate you, James Clear. Um, you're probably not listening to this, but I, I love your 321 Thursday. Um, he always says the most wisdom per word of any newsletter on the web. That is so true. Um, I love these three ideas. I encourage you to listen to it again. Take the time. Get your notepad out. Start meditating on these, and it will change your life. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. Thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.